Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Let's check out uh, the pundits, what they're saying about good old cryptocurrency. I'm gonna give you a quick list. This is from, <clears throat> sorry, from my uh, uh, MotorWave harmonic uh, scan. These are the ones that seem looking like they can do okay from the various ecosystem of different exchanges. So the ones that look okay, I'm gonna show you this, is Ethereum, Zcash against Euro, Waves, Bitcoin against US dollar, and this other one called DADI USDT. I'm gonna also show you a bunch that my scripts uh, have generated. Um, they're not pretty, but it uh, does the job. And I also got a spreadsheet I'm gonna show you as well. So I'm only doing this because if you read what the pundits are saying, you would think uh, that cryptocurrency is doomed or it's dead or it just, just doesn't have a future. I kind of disagree with that. But let me show you what's been going on. It's not as stellar as you'd want it to be. But uh, we have to deal with the cards that we're dealt with. So here, DADI against Tether. You can see here it's... And I'm only right now just showing you one day time frames. So you can clearly see there's been very little activity. Um, but the targeting is a little higher than the current price. That's what I look for. Uh, but let's go over to Ethereum right now. One other one I'd like to highlight here is um, has been supposedly doing okay. I'll show you that in the spreadsheet is Ethereum Classic. Uh, just try to get the chart here, please. Thank you. We can see it's targeting down. So I can't really say uh, if Ethereum Classic really has much going. But when you look at Ethereum, either against, and, and, and it does matter against which fiat currency that you're up against. See this little bar here, you got Euro, you got against uh, the Japanese yen, which is a little bigger, and then the U.S. dollar as well. So those little moves can make a big difference. It's not, and then the other thing, it's not much to go from, but uh, it, it does show some strength there as it's kind of grinding up. So Ethereum's looking okay. Waves is another one of interest. Uh, this one you think would have died by now, but it hasn't. It's slowly grinding up. You get some wicks, green wicks that are moving up as well. This little volume here. So again, it, it has some potential to move up. That's going to be an interesting performer there. Obviously, Bitcoin is the granddaddy. Let's check out what Bitcoin has got going on for us. Uh, so again, same thing. When you compare Bitcoin against the others that I'm highlighting here, it looks like Bitcoin has the most uh, potential, um, even though it's kind of range bound. Let me just go through this. And uh, we are in the range of 67.20 to 97. Uh, nine, you know, in, in around between, it peaked at 10,100. So it's, it's range bound there. I'm just waiting for it to move up. Uh, we've got some big bars here. Uh, but again, the next day, June 2nd, June 3rd, big move back down. So this is part of the problem with crypto right now. So there's that. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, that's pretty well it. Let me just check my list here. <coughs> okay, so that is what's available on Motive Wave. And, and to live trade on Motive Wave, you're going to be forced to use Bitstamp. And there's not a lot of performers in what Bitstamp offers. It only offers six. So the only ones you're going to get, if any performance, is Ethereum and Bitcoin. But lo and behold, I did put up an article... Uh, just now on this one called compound this one's moving exceptionally like a lot it's just coming off now but uh, 
I'm not sure. This seems to be put out by Andreessen Horowitz or whatever, uh, the venture capitalist. This, I think, is an inside job of, of, of uh, Silicon Valley to pump it up and uh, get the suckers in. And uh, I, I heard the stat today that 90% of all coins that are doing well are driven off of the Ethereum. So that's what's got the future is Ethereum. Bitcoin's doing well as well. But a lot of the other performers are just not there. We're talking Bitcash. I mean, look at, look at Tron. It's just, it's just, okay, we have a big bar here volume. But the one that I kind of wonder about is Dash. I mean, Dash is just going down for no apparent reason. Uh, XMR, again, Monero is just not to be found as well. So there's some, you know, I think that we're going to start to see a lot of the big coins, a lot of the little coins start to drop off uh, as volume gets, you know, it's just not there to support it. Anyways, let's look at the spreadsheet here I highlighted. And um, this is an interesting one. So generally, these are your best performers right now, but... I'm the kind of person, I just generated this earlier, like in the last hour. So I like, I'm, I'm a big believer, obviously, in momentum. So let's see which ones have been doing fairly well. So if I do the sort, largest to smallest, you can see here, obviously, BTC has been doing really well. BNB has been doing okay. Well, actually, both in Ethereum and USDT. Ethereum's number two, EOS, NEO, and these smaller ones like KNC, Litecoin somewhat, RCN's been doing okay, I've been talking about that last week, and there's some other ones as well, so that's fine for momentum, let's check out based upon a slope as well, and largest to smallest again, I believe it's Z to A, let's just see what happens here. Okay, so what we're looking for is slope. So right here, ooh, um, <laughs> this does not look good. So you can see here, there's only ones that have been doing really well. Barely BNB USDT's been barely moving. I can't chart that because it's not available in uh, the motor wave. But you have your BTC has been doing okay. I believe these two coins that have been really hyped up, they could be on a next tear up, but uh, they're not performing what you would expect. That's Tezos and Chainlink. They've been traditionally the big winners. Um, and these are just kind of going nowhere. EOS, BNB, FTT as well. So, and the, and the leader again, is Bitcoin out of the batch. So if we look at uh, volatility based upon uh, standard deviation, so we just want the least volatile, which one is that? BTC is not too bad, but uh, when you look at uh, BTC here, this is why I prefer hodling versus now active trading. It's very difficult to trade these up big moves and not trade it. And then you get three, three, four days of negative moves. That's pretty tough to do. I mean, it's trending up, not much, but it's an okay one to hodl. And the volatility from a higher level uh, is okay. It's not a star performer. I'm going to look at the CFDs, which will translate back into the, uh, to the, um, into the, uh, futures as well <coughs> just so you know I'm gonna switch up my I'm wanting to do everything now in Bitcoin or sorry in, in motor wave in terms of trading I'll be forced to get a live Bitstamp account um, I've had a data one uh, my style of trading will allow me to trade from motor wave with Bitstamp um, because doing it actively and doing it on an hourly or a even a four hour basis can get you banned from Bitstamp, believe it or not, because you're, you're sucking up too much data. 
and it'll ban your IP and probably ban your account as well. I mean, they're just a bunch of sissies, but again, I have no choice but to do a bit stamp. Not the best bro broker out there. The other account I'll be setting up is, uh, as I've shown before last week, is for the futures. I've gone through my last week on the webinar on what to focus on, and that is with Canon Trading. So you can go through my blog and look for Canon Trading, C A N N O N, uh, to see where I stand with them. So that's what I'm, I'm rebalancing everything now. Uh, I've waited out for six months for some kind of performance. And who knows? I know that Bitcoin will break out. The other coins, you know, they're there, but I've got literally money tied up in crypto. It's just not performing. I'm missing out. Thank you. I'm missing out also on the performance of other commodities, let's say, or uh, the U.S. indices have been just absolutely amazing recovery uh, since March. So I missed out on that. But yet, over the last week, I have identified what I think are really good plays, um, both for if the U.S. continues steadily leading the market, uh, as well as um, international, both in the currency, some agriculture, namely in China as well. And I'd say Asia as well, that's driving the demand. And that obviously impacts oil as well. So I've been kind of putting out in my Facebook group more engaging, more legit news that people are engaging with and have really helped me identify new data points I've not seen. And one of them is in uh, a video I put out on Friday on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find that about China 50. And somebody in a comment gave me awesome, awesome uh, reporting on that for both Hong Kong and China and that person's view on the outlook of China. And um, it's really deep and it's really good to have that kind of uh, people uh, contribute back into my outlook of stuff and it really helps. So I always thank people that engage both in the Facebook and the YouTube. Um, and I do get people at uh, the odd time uh, via my email list as well. So tonight I'll be doing a webinar, as you know, on different topics there. But back to uh, crypto. So right now, crypto long-term performance, Bitcoin and the classic Ethereum, uh, Compound, as I said, uh, you can look at that article on my blog to see that opinion. I think that's an opportunity that's come and gone and uh, picked up that news late, uh, lately. It could still move up. It's like $400 or something, and it's in the top 20 now of volume. So one of the big things that I look at <clears throat> that's always been helpful for me is uh, the reports that I'm able to generate that have been always, always useful. I've shown you this one called the Crypto Risk. You can clearly see that out of the four, all of them are negative right now in the last hour or so. Not a good thing, right? So we have here different uh, reports filtered on either volume, on trend, or not filtered at all. So let's look at the long uh, view. Let's see what we got here. So as I said before, RCN has been doing pretty good. I reported them last week, I believe, or a week before. So this is an interesting combination that has been doing really good. Um, I can actually probably pull it up here on trading view since a lot of you are on trading view so I've identified this one as a small little winner um, it's been consistently doing okay Let's see here okay so here it comes and this is found on Binance the exchange so we'll just keep it a daily view ooh but you can see how it's done all right I mean that's quite the rise um, but it's hit a peak comes back down so obviously we know where the support is so if it hits that support Bitcoin goes up don't be surprised if this will probably outperform all the other coins that we've seen so that's quite an interesting chart there I wouldn't put a lot uh, of, of money in, into that but you can see how it's just been above trend despite um, 
even Bitcoin. And it's got a, a very long term uptrend as well. So um, here it's very, well, it seems to be quite volatile. Um, but uh, this is one of those ones you could hodl. Again, I would not put a lot into this. You can see here it, it is picking up the bearish view that I just shown. Uh, it's it's overvalued probably, but here it, this is where it gets funny. So um, it did pick up these bullish signals again, but that's back in April, so that's kind of useless for us. So here's our targeting that we can use for entries and exits. Uh, if I wanted to follow through with that, again, this these reports I can generate through my Quant Analytics service. So if you want to learn more about this and other stuff that I do, what I would strongly recommend you is just go over to quantlabs.net, learn about uh, the PDFs I put out. I've got uh, a place where you can subscribe for that. Also, I just relaunched my store, which is really pushing the DVD I've got, which there is a web edition uh, for this. So that's to learn how to build out a uh, an algo trading system via, again, something like I'm doing in MotorWave, or if you want to do it in Python as well, that can be done as well by building out your own custom bots. So namely, going back to uh, our reports here, RCN looks pretty good. But one thing I can tell you that I do look for are these momentum builds. Uh, and it looks like it is building back up again. That is my 180 view. I have a 30 day view, so let's check that out. As you can see here, these are bigger views. Uh, that's a 30 day. So I don't know if this can be a decent little, uh, a little performer that you could have in your portfolio of crypto. But uh, it's coming back again, so this is something to watch. So let's look at something like filtering on, on uh, volume. So here we have VET. VET has been an interesting one. Uh, we have this one called IOTX USDT. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you. I probably could show you this on uh, Binance. But Again, what we look for is our, our trading entry. If we're going to do a hodl, is it within our golden zone? And clearly it's not because it's above trend, but it's been a, a downtrend long term. But right now, what we look for is a 618. So it's done well and bounces around in the Fibonacci between the 382, 236. And at some point, you probably want to get out once you hit that 236 level. So again, we have, you can see more positive returns. Or it gets scary are these very, uh, the risk, the tail risk is quite huge on the negative side. So we'll just bounce around. We've got some bearish. Again, these are from, it looks like in May. So again, early June, not very useful for us. So this is a, definitely an opportunity we missed. Uh, again, when you see instances like this, you can clearly see it does shoot up and it will drop, but there's enough volume to drive it back up price-wise. And you, what you want to watch is obviously momentum as well for that. So here we go on a, on a lower, on a shorter time frame. But the, the, these, the, this is where it gets tr hard to trade. But when you go from, let's say, when this is June... Sorry, May 23rd at here at 0036, and you move it all the way up to 0 0.006. So in five days, you've doubled. This is what you're kind of looking for, but they're hard to find. So you have to stay on top of these kind of reports to know what to look for. So another one that's done okay is Stellar, according to this. And what drives that is usually this entry here. Um, one I can tell you is I'm not a fan when I see a neg like that's a strong negative downward uh, trend line. So it is above trend, but from my, from my experience, you can see here it does go above trend and then it just gets sucked in. So Stellar might not be your best 
uh, friend right now. And it will really depend on performance pretty well on, on Bitcoin. It used to be one of those that used to go against the direction of Bitcoin. But the funny thing is, is that this is clearly uh, underperforming Bitcoin. So I would definitely probably not pay a lot of attention to this. You can see the number of negative returns here. Those are daily. Has some um, some uh, what do you call uh, bullish harmonics it's found. But again, we, we've run it against uh, the motive wave as well. And um, it's, it's, I think it did come in the top for an excellent view. But um, let's see here. Yeah, so XLM is excellent, but when you look at the chart, it's kind of, this is the history of it. Hits at the peak, will it come back? Who knows, it probably will depend upon Bitcoin. Moving along here, here's some nice views, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, we're starting to see some interesting uh, performance here. Uh, let's see here what we've got in the 30 day. It is moving up, I can't deny that. Again, that's uh, 0.065 where I'll end up. So it's done all right. It's done all right. So I'd have to really look at what is grinding it up, and I can report back on that. I have another uh, report that will um, tell you what is the best performers right now. I'd have to do some more analysis. Cardano is another one, again, that can surprise you. You can see here it's above trend, some nice, real strong uh, upswings. But again, you, you, you see usually this, this buy signal you think is false, but just look at, at where it's at. Uh, and there's no, no um, sell signal yet. So again, definitely a missed out opportunity right here. Um, and it's, it's somewhat undervalued. So... What that tells me, Cardano, if Bitcoin does move up a lot, I think by looking at this Cardano, because it's so undervalued, this, this can move up. This can move up and probably outperform what, Cardano, uh, what Bitcoin will give you. But again, you can see here, there's probably a stronger uh, tendency on the negative side on the daily returns. Again, I don't pay attention to that, the head and shoulder. Here's the direction. Here's our targets. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that, but, but those are big, strong upswings. And again, it went from 0 0.05 all the way up to 0 0.08, almost 0 0.09. So it's doubling. But again, you can see here that it's, it's definitely, uh, could be petering out, um, based upon performance. And when it gets hammered, that was back in March. So there are some coins and that is quite the rise. So Cardano is definitely a missed out opportunity. But look at your Fibonacci. Your Fibonacci is the key because the historical Fibonacci level, it's just below this. I, you know, if you want to absolutely confirm what is going to be a good entry is just let it hit that 618 um, and see what happens because that there might be enough volume in there to, to move it up. But again, I have to look at that same uh, that same. Uh, that same uh, report that I mentioned also with Stellar as well. So, but that's looking pretty healthy. Tron, 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 Tron. I have talked about Tron, downward trend. You can see it right there. It is moving up. This might be a short-term play. Uh, again, if you would do it, you wait it out till you hit that 618 level. Again, just look at the amount of uh, negative returns, even hitting the fat tails. No, I, well, it might might have bottomed though. That's tough to say. We have a bearish. <clears throat> yeah. So here we have some interesting. We got a Marabuzu. Marabuzu's I like as a candle, but that took place March. Sorry, May 29, 31st. So that right there tells you this is a is a screaming buying opportunity. Let me just check on the time of that. Uh, 
So here we are, May. So it's telling you it's going to move up. So it's a very quiet time period. Let me just pull up uh, a better view of this. So we have a 30-day view. So we got May 29th right here. So this is where our Marabuzus were just screaming. Two of them. And look what happens. It goes from 0 0.015 to 0 0.175. Sorry, 17. So it's gone up. A little bit 20% in that time and that's why I like the Marabuzu uh, alerts especially if they're bullish and you get one or two just screaming at you so again that's something I missed out on but we're back to carefully analyze this stuff so this one looks good as long as Bitcoin performs so the problem here when you look at Tron or sorry MotorWave it gives you a false sense of what will perform and what won't. But when you go into the Python scripts that I've generated, and that's why I like them, it gives you a totally different sense of what's really going on. So we've got Tron looking okay. I'm kind of shocked by that. And these, these come from Binance as well. So again, they've been moving pretty good. IOST, USDT. Yeah, you got some performers here. Again, underperforming. Uh, but here's something interesting. Look at all those positive returns. This one's a good one, really good to look out for. Let's see if there's any signals coming out of this. Um, three star candle bullish May 30th. Let's see what it says here. I'm just going to go over a 30 day uh, chart here. So, May 30th. So, we missed out on that, missed out on that right here so this is when it gets generated right right in here 0 0.045 to point uh, zero zero five so uh, that's a, a ten percent move ten percent move now another one that's been doing kind of okay doing pretty good actually is that I've seen a lot of that but it's gone flat for a while but again you just these sudden rise up there's something driving that and this looks really good. Bet not doing too good on the daily return, but there are some fat tail positives on the on the positive side, so that looks good. We got a night uh, a bullish uh, here on a harmonic. Let's see if there's anything else we can find. No, I can't see it. So here again is our targeting for the entry and exit. But look at that. Wow. And that was sent out May 30th, folks. So let's sync it up. So let's see the 30-day view. May 30th. In around here. That's a classic signal that's worked. Look at that. From 0 0.05 to point. Uh, this is a 7.5, so that's a 50% return on that. VET was a good one to get into or should have been a good one. Cannot ignore these signals because these reports combined, based on experience, work out really good. That's why I use them. So that's that. So again, these are uh, a report based on volume. Okay? So now let's go over to the one that gives us for uh, crypto long based on trend. Okay, so this is based on trend. So here we go. So uh, XMR is a weird one. Um, so again, at the beginning, I said, is crypto doomed based upon what I just showed you among the last four, VET, Cardano, Stellar, and another one. I One just gave you a 50% return over, uh, you know, five, six week. Uh, five six week um, time frame I mean or sorry five day time frame it doubles so let's see what it says about good old Monero private coin this is our number one been really beaten down there's not a lot of breadth to, to the market or to this coin because you can see the the Fibonacci's aren't even far enough to be to be shown here Oddly, there is a few more positive 
daily returns here. Let's see on the signaling here on the Fibonacci. That's on the 50 level. Just a, just past that 618. So let me just look back at our buy signal if there was one. So we have a buy signal here. We have a buy signal here. This is a positive. This was a this could be a false positive, I can't say. But when they do signal from 40 to 60, now it's at six, roughly 60, whatever the price is, will it move up quite, quite a bit? It is above trend, but uh, this is why these entries above trend, the trend line is really a good key, especially if you're hodling or investing with crypto. So Monero, again, maybe okay to do. Looks not too good. It is above the 50 with the RSI. Oh, let me just check on the momentum as well. It looks flat, but there are other charts to look at, I would say otherwise. So here, yeah, see the 30 day, it is looking up, but it's highly volatile here. So the performance is questionable, but it does jump up. But you see, this is the thing. You look at the momentum, but the volume has not picked up the monster volume you'd expect. So let's look at our next pair, which is Bitcoin itself. Again, above trend, flat now, which is good because it was just all negative. So we now have a flat trend line, which is good. If Bitcoin does break out to its crazy momentum, then that is possible. We have here our tight range. It's been for the last little while. But again, uh, it's tough to say. There's been a stronger daily returns, positive daily returns versus the negative. We have here a, a bullish signal. Bearish. But it's been moving up from 77.50 all the way up to 9, 92.50. So again, that's a thousand data points over the last thousand hours, okay? So we have here a CDL outside detected end of May, okay? So here is our Fibonacci. So it's bouncing around there now above our 618. So maybe this might be a time to get in you can see here it went from roughly, let's say, eight, 9,000, peaked at over 18,000. The last time it broke that, it went from, oh, this is tough to say. But if it's above that trend, Bitcoin could be on its way. And here's your uh, daily targets if you want to follow that. Bitcoin, again, it's, it is grinding up. Good time to hodl. But here's the problem is when you put capital on your crypto portfolio, which ones do you think will outperform the others? There's a couple of strategies you can use. Just divvy up part of your portfolio and say a chunk of it will be a, 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 um, allocated to both either Bitcoin or Ethereum and another batch for the performance I've already talked about, including Stellar, uh, what was that, Cardano, and um, that if you if you've analyzed everything over the last month so again look at these big moves these big bars so again what we're looking for is that positive momentum so it may be building it may be building we gotta see these classic support and resistant lines get established and one way to do that is obviously using the Fibonacci levels uh, like here so we're, we're, we're now established 618. So there may be enough volume in there to, to actually push up the price based upon that. And from a historical point of view, you can see here it didn't do it once, but it is moving up, grinding up slowly, but it is grinding up. And then as I was saying about the portfolio, half would probably be between Ethereum and Bitcoin. And the other half I'd probably put towards a higher risk, smaller, 
coins that show better performance. But you have to keep a very tight lid on those calls for the smaller ones like VET, XLM, Stellar, and uh, Cardano. I haven't been convinced that Monero or Zcash are up on the way. I have to do deeper analysis. I've also talked about Dash. I don't know what this is for. It is above trend, but it's just negative. Like, why would I put a capital into a, a negative trending when I just showed you uh, alone Bitcoin has st has been flat, which is better than obviously negative on a long term basis. The Fibonacci's are too tight. I don't. I, I just don't like what I'm seeing in Dash right now. Um, there seems to be an even distribution of daily and positive and negative daily returns. Still not worth the risk. I'd rather put it into more mainstream, like at least uh, Bitcoin. We got a lot here to go through, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Dash. Just Dash doesn't really excite me. Not not like with what I shown you earlier in the other report. This looks good, but it's too volatile. Not 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 doing anything for me. Next up, we have Zcash. Again, that negative down downtrend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip through these. But look at look at the negative daily returns on Zcash. Let's go through here, blah, 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 blah. Let's see if we can find any pairs that have a flat or even positive trend line because we, we want to look for those. Those are the ones that will do well. See here, you could say, oh my God, Zcash is performing, but um, that's just one bar. It's just not as strong as you want. Okay, so we have Bitcash. Bitcash has not been performing. It's starting to flatten out, but again, stay with Bitcoin. So let's let's continue. Uh, it's just don't tie your money up with a big a Bitcoin cash. Stay with Bitcoin for now. For now, that is Ethereum potentially. I'm not seeing Ethereum here as a performer for some odd reason. I don't know why. But here we okay. Here we go. So we have Ethereum right here. So again, all these false positives. We got one here. Again, man. Oh man. Here's here's the dilemma negative uh, trend line again just something you just don't want to be part of it may break out you can always allocate more uh, out of Bitcoin or other proceeds from other ones let's see the performance here on the charts this is moving up uh, possibly here we go so we're starting to see some activity here well, let me just check the uh, the good old Fibonacci levels, see what it's telling me. See, it's not enough volume yet. It, like, like once it gets to that 618, I would consider it. But right now, I'm not, I'm just doesn't really excite me. We've got a bullish signal from June 1st, woo woo. Uh, this looks okay. It is grinding up. Some big move bars there. That that's potential. We got Litecoin here. This is another big disappointment as well. Negative trend, just not flattening out like Bitcoin. Oof, a lot of lot of ugly daily returns there. Again, I'm not. Let me just see the signals here. So we have bullish, bullish, and that was June first. Let's just see on the more recent activity here on the the bars it is moving up but again it's just not well let me just see here let me just be fair so we've gone up from 42 to 48 I mean that is a 10% return but uh, how does that compare to the other ones so again we've got above trend with Neo here just been bad I think there's just no volume in this thing it seems to be dead now to the world a lot of negative returns there. Yeah, just stay away from Neo. Not doing too good there. Um, yeah, I'd stay away. I think these these are you starting to see the ones get dumped. I mean, this looks like it's moving up. Ten to twelve. Those are big moves. That's a twenty percent return. But again, from a hodling point of view, you can see here it's moved up. It looks. Decent, but the RSI right now is too high 
So it'll probably drop back off. This is overvalued or overbought. QTUM, negative trend line. We got to see these straighten out. But the one that's ready to go right now, if it's going to break out, will definitely, definitely be um, Bitcoin. So again, a lot of negative returns here. QTUM doesn't excite me. Uh, just looking for anything that looks decent. I mean, it's trending up. Looks okay. But even Ethereum Classic's down. But uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the place to be right now. Like I said, I'm just going to look for the negative trend line. So that's Ethereum Classic we just looked at. This one they say could move from, from my, my spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm not seeing any big big bars come in. Yeah, that's it. So out of that, like Bitcoin seems to be the best one. There, there are other performance in the other report. So we'll leave it at that for now. Um, and uh, if you got questions or comments, let me know on the social or via whatever you find this on. Other than that, thanks for watching. We shall talk to you later. Have yourselves a good day. Thanks for the likes and all that. Appreciate it.